your legislative bio lists that you're a homemaker with a background in fashion merchandising. How did you get involved in politics? That's a really, really good question, isn't it? Um, really, I think it just started in college. I started being aware of um, the abortion issue, and my awareness was raised from that point on. I started paying more attention to what government does do, and I found that it was being, uh, it was intruding in our lives where it was never supposed to. So that's kind of how I, I got into politics. In your time here at the House, you have made family law an area of focus. Why is this an important issue to you? Uh, I saw my brother-in-law and sister-in-law go through a really terrible divorce, and it was really harmful to the kids. Um, and so I vowed that if I was ever elected, that I would do whatever I could to help Minnesota families, and the kids in particular. So, um, you know, one of the things I've been a champion of is, is equal shared parenting, and I just feel like right now the system is set up so that when parents go into court, they're not on equal footing. It ends up being this contest to see who's the better parent, and the better parent um, gets majority of the time with the children and therefore the child support. So uh, I just feel like if you're on equal footing when you go into the courtroom, that it will um, dispel a lot of the angst and the anxiety and the um, bitterness that often happens in those situations. And parents are more likely to work together to come up with a solution best for their kids. You're chair of the House Civil Law and Data Practices Policy Committee. What do you expect the committee to focus on in 2018? You know, one of the things uh, I know that you're going to be speaking with Representative Lucero coming up soon, and um, I asked him a few years ago to carry a bill on student data privacy. And so we're really hoping to move that this year. He's done a lot of work. He basically scrapped the original bill and started from started over and um, building the student data privacy policy into existing Chapter 13, which is the Data Practices Act. Uh, and so I, I'm really hopeful that that will be one of the things that, that we will tackle. There'll probably be some family law uh, stuff this year too. Um, and we'll kind of wait and see. Um, you know, the Minnesota Bar Association will have their, their annual bill. And uh, it's, I've, I've heard sketches of, of what's in that bill. It's not going to be anything too, too earth shattering. So. You represent Andover and parts of Coon Rapids and Ramsey. What state issues are most important to the people of District 35B? Well, one of the things I was able to do last year was secure funding in the bonding bill uh, for the cleanup of the WDE landfill. Um, and specifically in that landfill, the landfill's pretty much been cleaned up. Uh, if you drive along Bunker or Hanson, you'll see the little tubes sticking out of the ground. Um, that's the original landfill. The only part of that that didn't get cleaned up was a uh, holding pit. And this is where barrels of really bad stuff was dumped uh, several decades ago. And it just really needs to be get cleaned up. It's being monitored right now. They have, um, they have instruments out there that are flushing gallons and gallons and gallons of water through there to make sure that the groundwater isn't contaminated, but it just needs to come out. So I was able to secure um, $11 million last year uh, to address that. And we're going to be having some more funding probably this year because they found out that it's deeper into the clay liner than they thought. So probably another four to six million. You did an interview with our department in 2009, your first session here. Um, you talked about your beliefs in government, on government, excuse me, saying, I truly believe in conservative principles, smaller government, more power to the individuals, and keep government out of our lives as much as possible. Do you still feel that way? Oh, certainly. Certainly I do. And I, one of the things I'm hopeful that we can do, um, continue our work on in the legislature this year, is, is just getting rid of some regulation. Uh, when you do that, it frees up job, it frees up the economy to build jobs, and we've seen that um, it, it, particularly on the on the iron range, where these in and with uh, mining and with these pipelines, and um, to the point where Sandpiper just after three years, because the regulations were just ongoing, uh, they just gave up, th you know, threw in the towel and went somewhere else to build their line, and built it around Minnesota, and they took you know, that was three hundred or 3,000 jobs that they took with them. So those are the kinds of things that we, that we need to um, shore up government, make it smaller, uh, and, and uh, free up the, the free market. I've seen pictures and videos of you working with legislators on the Homeless Veterans Project. Uh, it was restoring some cottages. Right. 
uh, of the former Anoka State Hospital, make rooms for the homeless. What kind of experience was that, and how did that project come about? Well, it came about, Senator Jim Abler really had the vision for taking those cottages and, and doing something for homeless vets. We've got a real issue in the state of Minnesota with that. And as we all know, um, in the last month or so, we've experienced the cold. And, uh, you know, his thought was that no veteran should be on the street at night. They need a warm place to live. And so he partnered with Eagle's Nest, and I believe they have uh, another uh, facility towards Alexandria, I forget exactly where, um, what city it is, but he partnered with them and so I was able to go over a couple of times and, and help do some painting and stuff. I'm no, uh, I don't know how to re rewire electrical or any of that sort of things, uh, but there was something that everybody could do and uh, even if it was seemed to be small. So uh, it was really an exciting project to be a part of. We thought Jim was a little crazy when he said, you know, we want to have this ready to go by the first part of December. But the first cottage was ready. And uh, so there are, there are men living in that cottage right now and then they're working on the cottage for the women. And it's been really neat to see the community come together. There have been a lot of folks from the building trades that have come and donated. This was probably uh, before the cottage opened. I know they said over 200,000 hours of, of um, donated time 